Francis here. Today we are playing Beacon Pines by Hiding Spot Games, and it was released last week on September 22nd. I've had the pleasure of learning about the game and playing the demo version earlier this year during the Big Adventure event in January. Video link in the description box. And I loved the immensive narrative experience and how different the game mechanics are. This time using fill in the blanks in the storybook style, as you will see later in the playthrough. And so as not to give away too many spoilers at this point, I'll only be playing the first hour of this game just to give you all a sample of what's to come. To sum up, you play as both the reader of the storybook and its main character, Luca, and you and your friends set off to unravel a mystery that's been happening at the old warehouse. You also get to rewrite the past in the storybooks by using charms, which will change the events that happen. A quick word of warning about this game though, it will cover topics such as loss and missing parents, bullying and use of loud swears, so it can be a bit of a scary game for younger players. Anyway, if you are interested in getting Beacon Pines, it's now available on Steam, Xbox and the Nintendo Switch. I'll put details and links in the description box below for you to check out. So, without further ado, let us start playing. Here we go with the logos. And we start off with a storybook. Let's open this up. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1 Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Okay, and the game has started, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over and look at this uh, bouquet of flowers that is placed on a grave. Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Rolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Okay, so now we've met Rolo, who has come to greet us, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to this next area. Let's run around a little bit. A lot of dandelions, and we have sneezed, and this gives us Tickle, which is our first charm, which we'll be using later on. Alright, what we so the game is now prompting us to press C over here, and... We've got Wonderful. Tickle. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Well, we'll go along with the narrator's words and continue. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Rollo looked to the side suspiciously. This is our mission. We have to tell Gr Gran before heading out with Rolo. This, okay, it gives us. It also gives us one page of telling us what we need to accomplish, and the other page of tickles. Oh, uh -oh. okay. There we go. Press the wrong key there. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. This is, of course, still the tutorial section. So what we're going to do is we are going to walk around a little bit. You see something? It's just lie on this couch, a sofa. And we have Ponder. Got the Ponder charm for us. And here we go, sliding. I'm sure we've all done that as kids before. Let's uh, head over to the fireplace. Had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. We're going to walk around some more. Oh, we have we see something here. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Uh, some memories can be a little bit painful sometimes. All right, let's take a look at what this couch does. Gran had moved in. The house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. And let us head upstairs. Oh wait, let's check this out first. Just some dusty knickknacks. Look at every room. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. No, oh, we get hide. Let's take a look at what we've got. Got three charms by far. Let us look at what we've got here. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. We got an extra charm. Friends moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Let us head over to the other side of the room. Keep walking. Oh, here we go. Bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Always doing something cheeky to try and defy the rules. As of any small child. Okay, let's head this way. And here we are in the kitchen. Well, let's keep looking at whatever whenever there's a magnifying glass that shows up the only piece of furniture gran had brought when she moved in was an old hatch keep walking and here's a sink i'm gonna just turn the sink on and off a pair of dull scissors a broken can opener a mostly empty bottle of glue and some loose string we've got junk all right we now have five charms in total that's great, that's great. We're making some great progress. Prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Always handy to get to meal prep as early as possible. Okay, let's go outside. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Alright, this is where the game mechanics will come into play. In the meantime, let's just look at everything before we go over to Grandma. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, 
waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. All right, here we go. Oh, there is something else here. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. And here we go. Let's talk to Grandma. The less Grand knew, the better for everyone involved. Okay, so this is where we can use one of the free charms that we've just collected. We can either go with Ponder, Hide, or Chill. Alright. Well, since this is... We want to make Gran as less suspicious as possible, we're going to go with Chill. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. Okay, we're going to hit B and look at the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. So imagine if we are going to go hide. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. I do apologize, I just stepped on my mouse. Okay, there we go, now it's fixed. This is a recording after all. So at least hide still works works out. Are we going to head over? As always, get into trouble with Rolo is our next mission. Okay, let's head over back and meet up with Rolo. Take a look at Anything we can actually use? We don't see anything just yet. Oh, here we go. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Here's a big sign that shows us where we are. For a town that saw a few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and... A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Looks like we can't go outside of Beacon Pines. Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered, until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Okay, and let's see if we can talk to some people first. Let's talk to this guy. This guy in a suit first. <laughs> Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. You 
know how some people enjoy feigning how busy they are. This is one of them. And let us talk to this one over here. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Okay, now let's head over this way, and then we see a bridge. Looks like something's about to happen. There's nothing happening there, so let's move on. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Well, that's one way to put it. Okay, let's head over and talk to... This group over here is a rhino. Oh. There's a bit of bullying happening in this little corner. Ay ay ay, that is so mean. Alright, let's head over here. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. and glanced up from the clipboard. Oh, this is the equivalent of just recording some kind of surveillance and that could potentially be used against you. Alright, let's head this way. Oh yeah, we can't go there just yet, so we're going to head over to the treehouse where Rolo is waiting for us. Oh, there's a fisherman. Let's go for the chair, see what this gives us. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. This is uh, most likely a flashback scene. Let's go over and talk to dad. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Ooh, okay. Junk and tickle. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? I'm just casting the line. Oh. There's something. Can we catch it? Oh. Looks like I'm gonna have to do this again. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. 
Good for skimming the surface. Let's see if this would work. So I need to actually pull a little bit slower in this little mini game of fishing. Woo! That gave me a square, a jump, a, a scare, and we fished a toy duck. It seems. Okay, we're going to see if we can collect this duck. Oh, it looks like looks like we can't collect a duck after all. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? Let's see if using a, some junk would actually help this time. I'm going to pull a bit slower. Try not to let it vibrate too much. Oh, and we've got an old boot. I hope the other boot has, at least has a sock to keep it company. Oh, that was fun. Do I... Do I keep fishing or should I go back to the story? Already... Luca gently baited for skimming. Let's see if we can collect anything again. Let's catch anything once more. A little bit. I need to just go on and off with baiting and fishing. And we've got another duck. Okay, so at least. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna be a repeat. So we're going to head back out of this flashback. Okay, and we're back. Let's go to the treehouse where Rolo is waiting for us. There we go, Rolo. Is waiting for us indeed. Okay, an adventure awaits us. Can we find anything here? Oh, we've got something here. It's probably, probably the chill, um, chill charm. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. That was very sweet of Rolo. All right, let's head back. And follow. I have to say, there are quite a lot of. There's even a. Is that a. Well, at first glance, I thought the top left was a bike. as an old bicycle, but. Well, at least we see the old bicycle wheel at the bottom right. I'm gonna head back into town and. go to where Rolo is waiting for us. <laughs> if you say so, Rolo, let's head into town. Talk to a few people. Oh, there's a fertilizer house that we're going to. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Okay, we picked up an extra charm here. Well, let's head over this way. This hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted.
Let me let her get back to it. And let's head over here. <laughs> oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Well, you know what friends do, they cover one another. Here we go. Yep, we managed to get into trouble with Rolo, and we are in trouble. <laughs> Okay, we are going to need Rocky charms. Took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Okay, this is the only charm that we can use, so we're going to use that. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Okay, we're gonna have to invest the Valentine Warehouse alone, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, let's head over this way. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Oh yeah, of course. Indulgent. Nice. Let's see how many charms we have at this boat at, at the present time. So we've got six, seven charms total. All right, good, 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 good. And let us head over this way. No shit chatting. There's a library. Let's talk to this guy here. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. It feels there's a mild creep factor here. Yep, mild creep factor. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Let's head over this way. Oh, who's that? No butt crunching. Okay, so we've got this kid here who's also- The path led into a small yeah. hollow at the edge of Weepwood. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do, so that he could rule out that option. Okay. We're going to pick up. Okay, got. Can pick this up. 
Maybe we can throw it at the fence. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Okay, that's we're gonna continue with that. Oh, not what happening. One more to go. Yes indeed. Just one more to go, just to shut this the fence down. Gave way to silence. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. Let us take a look. There is a dumpster. You can go dumpster diving here. Wonder what this is. Always emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. It looks awful, though. And let's take a look at the back door. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. The sound of footsteps grew louder. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. Okay, uh, so we only have one charm. I'm this gonna use that. This story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. Okay, and we are... We've just somewhat ended the story at Warehouse of Horrors. So what we're going to do, we're going to head this way. And we've got Rendezvous of Roxy, where we can actually go back to that part of the story and use shit instead. Alright, let's give this a try. And here we go, we are going to deal with an enraged Roxy once again. This time we are going to be a little shit and see where the story change and how the story changes. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Well, we managed to change the story now and we can finally investigate with Rolo. Here we go. Nope, not gonna talk to you about my grandma. Oh, shame. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, Rolo. Rolo will supervise as always. Okay, we're gonna do exactly what we did just now. Throw some plants, plant pieces at the fence to just turn the light bulbs off. All right, we're about to see. Windows of the old warehouse came into view. Rollo began to bounce excitedly. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're about to see what happens to this part of the story when Rollo is actually in the picture. And we found a new charm, Rumble, this time. Okay, Rolo's now in the dumpster. A squishy bag of swish. That's almost never a good sign. And we've got some, got ourselves some walkie talkies. That was uh, mildly terrifying. The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. <laughs> Rolo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Rolo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. That is probably a body. We could be getting into a serious mystery here. Pretty exciting at the same time. Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo, 
No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3. Finding a Friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. event just happened. Most likely gra grandma received reports about a missing person. Electronic sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. Let us investigate what it is. And that's the walkie-talkie that we got from the dumpster the night before. It is very strange indeed. Okay, now that there's no more noise, let us... There really isn't anything left to do in this house. Oh, wait. Somebody's at the door. A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Luca's mouth felt dry. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Okay, so we're gonna need to go to the library to check for Rolo. See if he's actually at the library, but I have a strange feeling that he's not going to be at the library. Let's talk to this person. Nope, can't do that just yet. We're not going to talk to that clipboard guy either. So this is what's happening with Roxy's uh, Roxy's end in the meantime. Going to walk around. Maybe should we talk to the mayor? Mm -hmm. 
So there seems to be a missing child, but it could be about Rolo or another missing child. In the meantime, we will go up here and talk to this one here. Okay, let's head down from the cafe. Let us head and let us head over to the coffee shop. As I stated, no, excuse me, the library. Let's go inside. Let's talk to the librarian. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. He gestured to the shelves. Guess not. He's not in the library. And let us talk to Jace. So there is the Hank Atomic magazine that has just been added to the library, and Rolo isn't here. That's why he's. That's why it's very suspicious when he's not at the library. Take a look at the books at the library. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Of course. Boring subject. As with any small children. Mycological phosphorescence. Too many big words. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin offs. Let's make a jump. I can't, I can't just jump down from the top. We're gonna head back down and. Oh! Some new additions. Let's take a look. Barely any actual new additions. Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. That's one way to get books to be read. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. And we have succulent. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Okay, and I think we're. Okay, we've got a Steam achievement as nerd, so we looked like we've looked at every book in the library. Oh, somebody wants to talk to us. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably.
Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. So that is actually very nice of Beck, who's offered us offered to help us look for Rolo. Okay, I'm gonna talk to this kid again. Yeah, it's, so this kid is definitely obsessed with bugs. Okay, let's head back into the woods. Oh, and they've apparently bordered this wired fence. I'm going to have to go around the perimeter. Ooh. Let's talk to Beck in the meantime. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. And we meet the two bullies who were bullying in earlier in the in town. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Okay, we've got two options. We can either go with Tickle or Strange. Let's go with Strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. Oh, that's one way to fend off bullies by staying unreactive to the situation. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Well, at least we've driven the bullies off, but at the same time, we've actually managed to splash them with the strange goo. The person at the warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? Yes, indeed. We do have to find Rolo. Let's take a look at what this magnifying glass says. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Can we go? There's some ooze hap 
out from there, so we have to go this way. Oh, no, wait, we can't. So in the meantime, we can't really do much over here. Okay, well, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Chronicles and can we go with Struggle or Tickle? Strange. So far, it, Strange still has probably has still has some uses, but what we can do is we can also go for Struggle next time when we are alone at the warehouse. Ooh. There is actually something very fishy about this smiling hyena <laughs> with the with the wig. What looks like a wig on his head. Okay, looks like we're going to have to head back home. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Our Harvest Awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, steeling himself for Gran's wrath. And it looks like Gran isn't around either. Where could she be? Or could that be just a ploy to separate the kids? Nope, she's not in the garden either. Where could she be? Could she be upstairs? Let's go upstairs. Is she around? Is she in bed? Luca was alone. The house was empty. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. 
He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. That turned out to be a nightmare, but we're now awakened by the sister strange buzzing again. To focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Rolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Right, we've got a little task to do, so we're going to head over to where the treehouse is. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. Uh-oh, looks like we're about to hear some trouble about to happen. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. shared a determined look. Oh, that was a mild jump scare. Okay, we are now back, we are on our own, and let us head to the treehouse before we end his session. Okay, let's, there are some people here. Let's have a talk. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. Makes me wonder what sign they're talking about, but it doesn't matter. Let's head over to the treehouse. And let us hook up the antenna.
Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Fear gripped Luca's throat. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. trouble now. Yeah, 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 a bunch of clipboards. Oh, I love how they all repeat, of course. grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rollo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. No, oh, like I said, this hyena that is definitely fishy. wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Well, looks like we're gonna have to fight. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. 
Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. So what we can do is actually go back and maybe we can find struggle in the house warehouse of horrors. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the break. Only the sound of silver. <laughs> As you can see, this is what the story can come to if uh, if Luca actually investigated by himself, but instead of choosing one option, we chose the other option to fill in the blank, and we've come to this alternate scenario. So it's a little bit of a game of al alternate worlds. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this first hour playthrough of Beacon Pines. It's it's been quite a great adventure in many ways like for example I was got that jump scare the mystery that's happening with all that gunk and all that thrill that's been happening of course a lot of the story that will reveal itself later on as we play this game anyway once again thank you all for watching and I will see you next time